Hi everyone, Manthony Brotano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Michael Sarah album. True that. Michael Sarah is an actor, multi-instrumentalist, songwriter. He hails from Ontario, Canada. At this point, I don't think I need to list out all the successful TV shows and movies that he has played key roles in, because if they didn't exist, I probably wouldn't have gotten a large influx of requests to review this album. This album, which he has dropped out of the blue on Bandcamp, True That, it is 17 original tracks, a cover, a lot of tinny lo-fi odds and ends. There's some indie folk tunes on here, some piano pieces, instrumentals. Either this album is the quaintest soundtrack I've heard in years and the movie is just on the way, hasn't been put out yet, it's still in production, or this record is just a bunch of musical loose change Michael had jangling around in his pockets. And even though there's nothing really game-changing in the track list of this record, there are some highlights, like the sort of wonky guitar intro. It's got a 3-4 time signature, really eerie melody, definitely sets the tone of the album. And then there is a cover version of Blaze Foley's Clay Pigeons. Not a song I'm terribly familiar with, but it sticks out very plainly as a cover with its steady finger picking and ethereal pianos and really sharp melodies, sharp lyrics, poetic lyrics, as well as clear structure. It's easily the most coherent song on the entire LP, which really makes it stick out like a sore thumb in the track list and by default, kind of makes it the best song on the entire record. There are a few other acoustic ballads in the track list here, but they are nowhere near as memorable or as immediate. Tracks like Oh Nadine and Steady Now and the song Ruth, which may in fact be the, the saddest story that Michael Sarah pens on this record. All these songs are way too weak voiced and gently strummed. They're too faint, too faint melodically, structurally when it comes to the performance as well. There's the song What Gives, which is kind of a sour, strange little one minute rock track that kind of sounds like a, a Unicorns demo. Unicorns being a band, I'm not really surprised Michael Sarah might be into given that he has played bass for Mr. Heavenly, which does have a Unicorns connection. To me, the brightest spots on the entire LP are the instrumentals, are the little piano pieces, and that may in fact be because the 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 expectations are lower. It's not like there's anything big to expect in terms of structure from these tracks. It's not like there's a lyrical component to these tracks, so Michael Sarah's voice, which is maybe one of his weakest points on this record, isn't really showcased. And for the most part, these instrumentals are very cute. They are very, as I said before, quaint. They're sweet. They are loosely performed. They're rickety. They're endearing. They're relaxing. There's the piano piece, Gershie's Kiss, which is very nice. The humdrum track, the guitar piece on that song is, is very cute, even though there are some sour guitar notes on the song here and there. The song 2048, another track in 3-4. If you give it a listen to this album, you will hear that Michael Sarah does love that time signature, and this is a little drum machine, keyboard piece, at least it sounds like drum machine. I can't really tell with just how bad the recording is, but it's got this sputtering little beat, some very charming keyboards, and I really like the song Old Gray Whistle as well, with these really grand, rich, saloon-style piano chords matched with some acoustic guitar. It's really just a mixed bag of hit-or-miss songs. There's no overarching theme or anything to really pull these songs together outside of just the generally subpar recording. I'm kind of feeling a five on this album, like a light to decent five. And you know what? I don't really think Michael Sarah had any ambition beyond making an album of that quality because he sounds like a hobbyist, which is totally fine. There's nothing wrong with being a hobbyist. Many of them send me their music. However, I don't review it. I don't point it out to you guys until these artists sound like they've got their shit together, until they sound like they know what makes for a catchy, immediate, time-spanning, or interesting song, until it sounds like they're putting together a professional grade or interesting recording. I know that lo-fi is a genre now, and that people have gotten past the idea that you need to have a good, clean recording in order to get fans. I, I, I understand that, and I like that. It's great that you don't need to have a recording as clean as like a Nickelback record in order to get listeners. But from my perspective, 
perspective, what really puts Michael Cera above any of these hobbyists that may be sending me their music at any point throughout the week? Aside from the fact that he's Michael Cera, nothing. I'm gonna be 110% honest with you right now. If this record blew your mind, you don't need me, you don't need any music, journalism, website currently in existence right now. What you need to do is go on Bandcamp, type in Indie Folk, and you will have your mind blown numerous times, over and over and over and over, just like one musical mushroom cloud after another. Because there are so many internet albums that are floating around right now that are either at this level or higher in terms of songwriting or recording. Transition, if you've given this album a listen, what did you think about it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And that's it. Anthony Fantano, Michael Sarah. True that, forever.